Hello everyone, welcome back to online lab session of our electronics syllabus. Today we will be conducting the third experiment that is op-amp as an adder. This is the session 1 of the third experiment. In the session 2 of the, the same third experiment, we will be constructing a circuit where op-amp will be acting as a subtractor. In the last two experiments, we constructed op-amp as an inverting amplifier and the non-inverting amplifier. So in today's experiment, we will be using the same op-amp and cons we will construct uh, op-amp as an adder circuit. So what exactly is this op-amp? Op-amp which is called as operational amplifier, it is called by the name operational amplifier because using that op-amp, we can perform mathematical operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, integration, differentiation and so on. Hence it is called as operational amplifier. So in today's experiment, we are going to construct a circuit using this 741 op-amp IC and we will be analyzing how the op-amp can be used as an adder. So here is a pin diagram of an op-amp 741 IC where as usual, it will be having 8 pins, 4 pins to the left of the notch and 4 pins to the right of the notch. Here pin number 2 and pin number 3 are the input pins. Pin number 2 is the inverting input terminal of the op-amp. Pin number 3 is the non-inverting input terminal of the op-amp. And pin number 6 is the output pin of the op-amp. For the pin number 7 and pin number 4, we are going to connect the power supplies without which this op-amp IC will not work. And Pin number 8, 1 and 5 will be left open and this is the circuit diagram using which we will be constructing op-amp as an adder circuit. For this adder, the, for this op-amp 741, I will be using two separate voltage sources. Two separate voltage sources will be named as V1 and V2 and both the voltage sources will be connected to the same terminal of the op-amp that is inverting input terminal of the op-amp. So, here the op-amp will be acting as an adder in the inverting mode. That is, whatever the voltage I am getting at, I will be getting at the output side, that will be the negative version of the input signals. Adder in the sense, I will be getting an output voltage V0, which will be equal to the sum of the input voltages what I am applying. If I am going to consider the voltages what I am applying at the input as V1 and V2, then the output will be equal to the sum of those two input voltages that is V1 plus V2. But since these two input terminals are connected to inverting input terminal, then I will be getting the symbol as minus, minus V1 plus V2. So here V0 will be equal to minus of V1 plus V2. In the sense, if the two voltages what I am applying, if I am going to talk in terms of sinusoidal signals, if the two voltages what I am applying is in this manner, then the output will be like this. That is, the output will be the inverted version of the input signals. So, this is the circuit diagram using which we will be constructing a adder circuit. And this is the tabular column where V1 and V2 are the input voltages what we are applying. We are going to vary the input voltages in steps. These two are nothing but the RPS. Two separate RPS will be using in this experiment. One of the RPS will be named as V1. The other RPS will be named as V2. And we will be varying the voltages in steps. We will be varying the voltages of V1 and V2. And we will be plotting the readings of both experimental and theoretical values. Experimental value is nothing but the voltage value what we will be getting in the voltmeter. V0 is nothing but a DC voltmeter what we are using in this experiment and theoretical calculation in the sense for these two input voltages what we are applying, we are going to do the calculation and note down in the last column that is the theoretical output voltage. So let us begin with the connections of the op-amp as an adder circuit. So these are the apparatus what we are going to use in order to conduct this experiment that is op-amp as an adder. For this experiment, we will be using two RPS. One of the RPS will be considered as V1 and the other RPS will be considered as V2. Let us consider that this will be acting as V1 and this will be acting as V2. And this is the dual power supply 
which is required in order to provide uh, the power supply for the IC that is plus 12 and minus 12 VCC will be given with the help of this dual power supply. And this is a DC voltmeter what we'll be using in order to uh, measure the output voltage. And this is the board, op amp board what we are using in order to conduct the experiment. So this is an op amp IC where we'll be having four pins to the left of the IC and other four pins to the right of the IC. This is pin number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. In this experiment, we need three resistors each having a 10 kilo ohm. So here I am having five different resistors, five number of resistors each are having five kilo ohm resistance and I can use any of these three resistors for this experiment. So let us begin with this experiment by connecting the power supply that is plus VCC and minus VCC. So pin number 7 will be given to this is this is the pin number 7 that will be given to plus VCC that is the red knob of the dual power supply and pin number 4 this is the pin number 4 pin number 4 will be given to minus VCC that is minus 12 which is the green knob in the dual power supply after that from the pin number 2 the resistor will be connected, one terminal of the resistor will be connected to the other end of the resistor will be connecting the RPS. So pin number 2 will be connected to one end of the resistor, let me call that as the resistor R1 and the other end of the resistor that is the same resistor R1 will be connected to positive terminal of V1. So in our experiment we are considering this as V1. So positive terminal of uh, V1 and third that is red and the negative terminal of the RPS will be connected to ground. This is the negative terminal of the RPS that is negative terminal of V1 that must be connected to ground that is black knob of the dual power supply. After that we have to connect the same pin number 2 to other resistor which is named as R2 which is having the same value of 10 kilo ohm. So I had used the first resistor now I am using the second resistor. So pin number 2 in the sense I will be shorting the wire to the same pin number 2. So the other end of the resistor R2 will be connected to V2 that is the positive terminal of V2. This is the positive terminal of V2. Then the negative terminal of V2 will be grounded. So I am going to short this negative terminal of the V2 to the common terminal of the dual power supply. After that pin number 3 is grounded without connecting any kind of resistor pin number 3. So this is the pin number 3. This is pin number 3. I can directly connect this pin number 3 to ground in the sense common terminal or the common point of the dual power supply. So I have just shorted the pin number 3 to ground. After that we have to go with the RF connections. RF is connected again to pin number 2. So I will be just shorting this same pin number 2 to another resistor which is again having a value of 10 kilo ohm. So I am again using the same resistor. I am using the uh, resistor of 10 kilo ohm which is present in the same board. The other end of the resistor will be grounded. Sorry, the other end of the resistor will be connected to pin number 6. So this is the other end of the resistor. This is the other end of the resistor that will be connected to pin number 6. So pin number 6 is this. So I will be connecting the other end of resistor to pin number 6. Now I have to connect this voltmeter. For connecting the voltmeter, positive terminal of the voltmeter must be connected to pin number 6. So I am just shorting this wire. Pin number 6 is already having a wire which has come from RF. 
So, I am just shorting the positive terminal of the voltmeter to pin number 6. Pin number 6 is connected to positive terminal of the RPS and sorry positive terminal of the voltmeter and the negative terminal of the voltmeter will be connected to common point of the dual power supply. So, this is the connection what is required in order to conduct this experiment that is op amp as an adder for which I will be using two RPS one will be considered as V1 the other one will be considered as V2. So, in our experiment this is V1 and this is V2. Now, what we are going to do is we are just going to vary the voltage uh, in the RPS in steps and note down the voltmeter reading. Before that let us turn on the power supply. After turning on the power supplies of these apparatus, we have to vary the voltages of this V1 and V2. You can vary in any manner. Let me first set the V1 voltage to 1 volts and V2 voltage also to 1 volts. V1 is set to 1. Now, I am changing V2 and I have set the voltage of V2 also to 1 volts. Now, the voltmeter is showing me a reading of minus 2.04. The voltmeter must show me the negative symbol. If it is not showing me the negative symbol, then the connection has gone wrong because the RPS of uh, that is the positive terminal of these RPSs are connected to negative terminal of the op amp that is inverting input terminal of the op amp. So, obviously the output voltage must be the inversion of the input. So, the negative symbol has to appear across the voltmeter. So, for the input voltages of 1 volts in both RPSs that is V1 and V2 are set to 1 volts then the voltmeter is showing me a reading of minus 2.04. Now let us move on to the next trial. Uh, I will set the RPS, uh, I will set the voltage of RPS 1 to 1 nodes itself. Let me not vary this. Uh, let me just change this V2 voltage to 2 volts. For the voltage of V1 as 1 volts and V2 as 2 volts, the voltmeter is showing me a reading of minus 3.00. For the th third trial, let me vary V1 to 2 volts. So, after uh, setting a value of 2 volts in RPS1 that is V1, I am getting a voltmeter reading of I am getting a voltmeter reading of minus 3.99. This is the third trail. Now for the fourth trail, let me vary this V1 to 3, that is 3.0 and vary this V2 to 2.5. You can vary these voltages uh, in steps of 0.5 or 1 or uh, 1.5. For uh, 5 different trials, you have to note down 5 different voltmeter readings. So, now for the next trial, that is for the fourth trial, V1 value is 3 and V2 value is 2.5. I am getting a voltmeter reading as minus 5.41. And for the last trial, let me set V2 as 3 volts. So, now V1 is set to 3, V2 is also set to 3 and the voltmeter is now showing me a reading of minus 5.93. So, after taking the readings, please turn off these knobs or rotate these knobs to 0th position. Switch off the power buttons of these RPS as well as the dual power supply and later switch off the main power button. So, these are the readings what we got while conducting the experiment. Uh, for uh, different values of V1 and different for different values of V2, these are the experimental values what we had got. For these values, now you have to calculate the theoretical value of the output voltage using this formula V0 equals minus V1 plus V2. 
you have to carry this negative symbol in the experimental column because as I have already told you the answer must be in the negative symbol because the output voltage will be the inverse inverted version of the input voltage. This is the pin number 2 and this is the pin number 3. So, since we are applying the input voltages that is V1 and V2 to pin number 2, the output must be the negative of the input voltages that is V0 must be equal to the inversion of the sum of the two input signals minus V1 plus V2. This is pin number 6, this is 7 and this is 4. If these two sources that is V1 and V2 are connected to the non-inverting input terminal of the op amp then the output would be V0 equals V1 plus V2 only. But in this experiment we are connecting both the sources to inverting input terminal. So the output of this experiment will be equal to the negative of the sum of the two input voltages. Now let us calculate the theoretical value of these 5 trails. For the very first trail V0 equals minus of V1 plus V2. For the first trail uh, the V1 voltage is 1 volts and V2 voltage is also equal to 1 volts. So V0 equals minus of 1 plus 1 is equal to minus 2 volts. So V0 is equal to minus 2 volts. So let us tabulate that over here minus 2.0. So for the second trial V0 equals minus of V1 plus V2 it is minus of V1 value is 1 volts. V2 value is 2 volts. So 1 plus 2 minus 3 volts. So V0 is equal to minus 3 volts. Even though the calculations are very very simple in this you have to show the calculation part because each and every step will be carrying a separate marks in the exam. So uh, let me just write all the five different trials minus 4.0 and here it is minus 5.5 whereas for the last trail it is minus 6.0. Now if you are going to compare these two columns the readings are almost uh, same. Minus 2.04 is the experimental value whereas the theoretical value is minus 2.0. That is these two readings are almost closer to each other. So with this we have constructed a circuit using an op amp which can be used as an adder. So in the next session that is in the session 2 of the same third experiment we will be constructing an experiment sorry we will be constructing a circuit where the op amp can be used as a subtractor. So the final result of this experiment is we have constructed a circuit using an op amp which can be used as an adder. Here the experimental value and theoretical values are uh, closer to each other. So we have successfully conducted an experiment using op amp as an adder circuit. In my next session that is session 2 of the same experiment number 3 we will be coming with the next circuit where op amp can be used as a subtractor. Thank you.